A new method of producing diamonds. Scientists from South Korea have developed a new diamond production method that does not require enormous pressure and can be carried out at slightly lower temperatures than the currently most popular synthetic diamond production techniques. If the technique proposed by South Korean researchers proves successful, diamond production will become much faster and easier. Diamonds are rare minerals. It is a form of pure carbon in which atoms bond tightly together. The result is extreme hardness. Diamonds are the hardest known naturally occurring substance. They are also excellent conductors of electricity and heat. They are used in quantum computers and magnetic sensors, high-power electrical devices, radiation detectors and lasers. Natural diamonds are formed in the Earth's mantle, hundreds of kilometers below the surface, under intense pressure and enormous temperatures. This process can take billions of years. But scientists can create synthetic equivalents, reproducing the extreme conditions found below the surface. Man-made diamonds are very difficult to recognize. In fact, they do not differ physically, optically or chemically from fossil stones. Currently, the most popular method of producing synthetic diamonds requires a pressure of almost 60,000 times greater than atmospheric pressure and temperatures up to 1,600 degrees Celsius. It's an expensive method. It also requires an embryo on which a new diamond will grow and the presence of liquid metals. In an article published in the journal Nature, scientists from South Korea described an alternative method of growing diamonds that does not require cruel pressure and can be carried out at slightly lower temperatures. A team of researchers from South Korea's Institute of Basic Sciences grew diamonds using a mixture of liquid gallium, iron, nickel and silicon. Heated to a temperature of 1,025 degrees Celsius and exposed to gases, methane and hydrogen. The new method does not require the use of seed crystals or additional pressure. Researchers grew diamonds at a pressure of just one atmosphere, which is normal sea level pressure. This method creates crystals no larger than 100 nanometers in diameter, about the size of a typical virus, but researchers hope to create larger crystals as the technique develops. It takes just 150 minutes to create such tiny diamonds. Researchers initially placed diamond particles on pieces of silicon wafer and added droplets of molten gallium and other liquid metals. Then exposed the mixture to methane or other carbon-containing gases. They hoped that the carbon from the gases would spread into the liquid metal and bond to the diamond seed, creating a larger crystal. And it worked. In subsequent experiments, scientists discovered that this method did not require a diamond seed. Carbon atoms from the methane spread throughout the molten metal and act as diamond seeds. So far, South Korean researchers have used their method to create a diamond foil consisting of thousands of tiny crystals tightly packed together. But foil is not a stone. The authors of the new method claim that the process can be improved. We suggest that simple modifications could enable diamond cultivation over a very large area by using a larger surface area. 
appropriately configuring heating elements to achieve a much larger potential growing area. And by better distributing carbon to the diamond growing area, they wrote in the publication. These modifications will take time because research on this process is still at a very early stage. But the authors of the new solution believe that it has great potential and that other liquid metals can be used to obtain similar or even better results. The process currently used to create most synthetic diamonds takes several days and requires much greater pressure. If the new technique proves successful, making diamonds will become much faster and easier. artificial leaf, that uses sunlight to produce gas. Inspired by photosynthesis, chemists from the University of Cambridge have developed a device that uses sunlight, carbon dioxide and water to produce synthesis gas. Artificial leaf, as the machine was named by its authors, may become an alternative to fossil fuels in the future. Artificial leaf, has huge potential that can be used in energy or transport. Cambridge scientists have demonstrated that they can directly produce synthesis gas in a sustainable and simple way. The invention of British scientists is at a very early stage of development and a lot of work is still needed before the artificial leaf will power our households. If it ever happens, the results of seven years of hard work by Cambridge scientists were published in the journal 
nature materials. Although the artificial leaf is powered by sunlight, its designers argue that it also works effectively on rainy and cloudy days, just like natural leaves. This means that this technology does not have the limitations faced by conventional solar panels and can be used not only in the summer months or in countries with high sunlight. It works perfectly from dawn to dusk anywhere in the world, said Virgil Andre, one of the study's co-authors. The device produced by Reisner and his colleagues is inspired by photosynthesis, a natural process in which plants use energy from the sun to convert carbon dioxide into food for themselves. Synthesis gas is currently produced from a mixture of hydrogen and carbon monoxide and is used in the production of fuels, pharmaceuticals, plastics and fertilizers. However, unlike industrial synthesis gas production processes, the artificial leaf does not emit additional carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. You may not have heard of Singers itself, but every day you consume products that have been created using it. Being able to produce it sustainably would be a key step in closing the global carbon cycle and establishing a sustainable chemical and fuel industry. Admitted Professor Erwin Reisner from the Department of Chemistry at the University of Cambridge, co-author of the study. The device uses carbon nanotubes with two light absorbers. Similar to the sunlight collecting molecules in plants, that are connected to a catalyst made of cobalt. Once immersed in water, a reaction begins in which one light absorber uses a catalyst to produce oxygen while the other performs a chemical reaction to reduce carbon dioxide and water to carbon monoxide and hydrogen, creating a synthesis gas mixture. Synthesis gas is not as calorific as natural gas, so its combustion is not as efficient. The team of researchers is now looking for ways to use their technology to create a sustainable alternative to gasoline. Synthesis gas is already used as a component in the production of liquid fuels. What we would like to do next is, instead of making singers and then converting it to liquid fuel, we would make liquid fuel in one step from carbon dioxide and water, Reisner said. While great progress has been made in generating electricity from renewable energy sources such as wind power and photovoltaics, Reisner says the development of synthetic gasoline is essential. There is a great demand for sustainable liquid fuels for heavy transport, shipping and aviation, he noted. Our goal is to sustainably produce products such as ethanol, which can easily be used as fuel, Andre said. Producing it in one step from sunlight using a carbon dioxide reduction reaction is difficult. However, we are confident that we are heading in the right direction and that we have the right catalysts. So we believe that we will be able to create a device that can demonstrate this process in the near future, he added.